there is, uh, we are very thankful to our partners in Stockholm, without whose help it would not be possible to run these events. So thank you, Companion Stockholm, Devrel Events, Make Trade, and Sweden on the go for your awesome support. Uh, this is your local community. If you have any question about Startup Grind, you can reach out to any of us. Uh, I am here. Uh, my co-director, Ule, is here uh, from Devrel Events. Our mentor, who is a chapter director for Hong Kong, Jens, he's here to answer your questions. Amanda runs an impact startup. She runs the social media community. And Marina runs a consulting in impact space. And she's responsible for building the community for Startup Grind. And a warm welcome to uh, Startup Grind Stockholm community. We're really happy that you could make it uh, uh, to the event and really happy that Break It is kind of discussing such an important topic with us, startup storytelling, and of course, the journey of building Break It and all. So first of all, a warm welcome uh, once again. Um, why don't we start with a little bit about you, Camilla? So if you would like to tell our listeners, audience, and viewers here yeah. uh, about you. So over to you. Say hi. and yeah. Hi. And, and really nice to meet all of you. Uh, I see there are so many interesting people here uh, in your presentations. And uh, uh, so I'm really looking forward to speak to you. And I also see that even my mother is here, Kaisa. <laughs> uh, so uh, we have found Startup Grind has now you know, reached even the older audience here uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah I'm uh, my name is, is Camilla and uh, now actually I've, I've just changed name uh, Camilla Bergman uh, because I married two and a half year ago and I finally made the decision to go from Björkman to Bergman um, and I I am the CEO at Break It um, I am a journalist from the beginning and uh, I used to actually study um, economics in Uppsala and uh, then I moved to London and uh, fell in love with the city and with a guy and decided I wanted to stay um, and at the same time there was this um, uh, the, the blogging trend came this was quite you know some years ago 2004 mm -hmm. or something and I started to write a lot and, and I had my own blog about my life in London and I just realized that I want to work with writing so I did um, a mistake that many journalists do. They, they think that journalism is about writing and I applied for journalism school, but realized that journalism is actually very little about writing. It's about, you know, finding, the ang finding an angle. Uh, um, um, uh, what do you, how do you say this word in English? But finding the truth and, you know, reporting mm -hmm. objectively, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of work. Uh, that isn't about writing, but I loved it anyway and mm. uh, decided I want to become a journalist. Um, and then my problem was that the the school I went to wasn't, you know, it wasn't the, the best school in the world, to be honest. And I had quite a lot of free time. So I started to write articles for Swedish magazines. And um, I wrote about, you know, topics that uh, I found interesting and a lot about relationships and love and psychology and career um, and this, and did a lot of pitch work to magazines basically um, and the, a few of those ma uh, magazines started, started to buy my articles and I then realized the, the thrill of selling and earning money and that was maybe even more fun than reporting and writing <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of my entrepreneurial start um, and then it kind of just moved on I, I moved back to Sweden worked at Cosmopolitan a magazine that mm -hmm. doesn't exist in Sweden anymore um, unfortunately uh, and uh, it started writing about um, uh, entrepreneurship I started my own company um, and, and did a lot of freelance writing for different magazines and did some media projects and came in. So, well, yeah, I've, I've done a lot of weird stuff. I, I bought a, a little dental magazine. Uh -huh. My mother, who is in the audience, knows everything about that period <laughs> of my life. It was chaos and very, very hard time. Uh, and then I actually managed to sell it. So it was nice. Um, and well, then I was uh, there in the media industry and uh, and just uh, loved it, basically. I loved to work with journalism and to work with business at the same time. Um, and well, that's, yeah, I've done a lot of different jobs in this industry. I, I don't think I should bore you with all of them. But now I'm at Break It. 
But this is really, really interesting because when we are uh, talking to founders, ecosystem builders or influencers or people working in somehow related to the tech and uh, entrepreneurship sector, mm -hmm. we find a common thread that they have had lots of diverse, different experiences. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's a way that you build resilience and kind of the strength for mm -hmm. something that you later build in your life. So I think it's great to have those experiences. Two points I like to pick up, like I'll ask your kind of advice on how would you compare. So you said you lived a period of your life in London. So London versus Stockholm, any similarities, mm. differences? What What do you see between the two cities? Oh, this was such a long time ago. So I and I wasn't involved in the tech scene at all, which I can okay. regret because it's so interesting uh, mm. there. And um, but I mean, if I should say one thing, it's that it's that it's so much easier in Stockholm to just get mm. in contact with kind of anyone. Uh, okay. You don't in London. It's it's a completely different thing. You don't just walk into a for example, in my case, Cosmopolitan, and, and mm. sell an article to them. You don't even get a reply on an email. But in mm. Sweden, you can basically have lunch with anyone. That's my, okay. that's my, um, uh, yeah, that's what I think. And that, that's a great thing because that kind mm. of builds the ecosystem. And it's really important in the tech scene that you just meet up and discuss and share learnings. Um, so I think that's a great thing. I think I can relate to that as well. I, I come from uh, the middle of Sweden, small end, a town called Vecco, moved here around two and a half years ago. But we have been able to build a lot of partnerships. It's so easy to call somebody and just meet. Yeah. Uh, with Zoom, it's even, even easier because you can just meet up somebody digitally. It's, it takes out that two to three weeks of meeting up time between that. So I think yeah. that's a great learning. Um, another thing, you, you wrote about other topics as well. You said love, relationships, and not. Between that and the tech and entrepreneurship side, is there any difference or is it the same? Like <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you, you, you're put, you're, um, you picked up something I think is really important. And it's actually not that big of a difference because mm -hmm. it, it's about people. And uh, how do you build a successful tech company? Well, you work with the best people and you get mm -hmm. along. Uh, and it's about re having relationships with the, with the, in the founder team, with your employees. It's about leadership. It's about mm -hmm. making right choices. And and that's so much uh, that psychology and love and relationship is about too. So mm -hmm. I can a lot of times think about my time as a relationship writer um, and think that this is what I'm do doing now. Um, so more than you think. But I also wrote those kind of uh, articles that that's what my mom doesn't want to to remember those, I guess. But you know how to how to be a tiger in bed <laughs> and, <laughs> and the uh, five new sex positions. There was always in Cosmopolitan these new positions that nobody have had ever um, read about. And yes, that was me who wrote those. But maybe a close parallel to this is maybe the five pitching techniques in a startup. Yeah. Maybe yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> or the best way to find your co-founder as to your partner. So, so I think uh, really love it. You find a common thread between those, those two things. So why break it? What brought you to break it? Like, why did you decide to come to break it? So I, I uh, no, started noticing break it that there were a lot of articles coming up at Facebook, on Facebook and I thought they had like, like this kind of fun tone that I wasn't used to in the in the business media. I didn't read that much business media at all mm -hmm. before break it. And um, I then worked as editor in chief at a small uh, business magazine called Driva Eget, uh, Run okay. Your Own Business Magazine. And uh, I contacted Stefan Lundell, who's one of the founders, um, and we actually contacted both Stefan and Ulle, but Ulle never replies to those sorts of emails, uh, to meeting up and have a coffee. He's, uh, Stefan is much, much more open to those. So I, I sometimes uh, joke with him that it was lucky that Stefan actually replied and mm -hmm. said that we could take a coffee. And we really kind of clicked and, and we had lots of ideas and we liked to talk about media business and um, it, it kind of grows something there. Um, mm -hmm. But then I, we didn't really do, do anything more about it. And I started working as, uh, uh, I don't know the English title, but uh, some kind of head of at mm -hmm. another media company working with the young women's uh, uh, magazines and brands. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we talked during this time. And at that time, I wasn't really... It was quite a different, difficult role I was at this company. And I felt that 
this isn't 100% right for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I and me and Stefan started talking again about coming to break it. And uh, we just decided that I'm going to jump on. Um, and I remember I was really, I was really, uh, it was important for me not to just join as an employee. I said that if I'm going to join, I want you, me and Ulle to run this together. Um, and I, I want to be a um, co-owner of the company because I don't like to be employed. I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm. And, and that's tricky. I, I thought a lot about that. I think a lot about that, how to kind of join a company. First of all, when the founders has already set the foundation and they know, they think, you know, this is what we should do mm. uh, to, to just to do that. That's difficult. But also, you need, you know, you need to cash up and, and buy yourself mm-hmm. into the company. Mm-hmm. And in my case, I was lucky to, to be able to get a loan from another uh, one of the uh, investors in Break It so I could get in. But I, I'm not one of the majority majority owners, but it's still important for me to be uh, to, to run it together. But I used to joke, sorry, but I used to sometimes joke with Stefan and Ole that it was really, they didn't know what they got themselves into when they said yes to this. It was actually quite naive to just like, oh, this, this girl shows up and wants to be oh, uh, owner in the company and run it together with you. And they were just like, yeah, okay. Um. <laughs> but very interesting. Uh, I think um, a good uh, point for our audience out there, and I think what you mentioned about relationships and the commonality between relationships side and the startup side, and the point that you made, you just caught up for a coffee. I think it's very important to spontaneously. So if we approach for something, maybe an opportunity opens its doors for us. So mm-hmm. I think it's important as startup founders to kind of, if we find something which is kind of our value structure or our backing, we should just pursue it and not just sit around. So I think that's great that you call them. And then you also kept contact while you were working at the other media outlet and eventually it worked for you. Um, Coming to Break It, how is it positioned? What is the Break It brand about? We we do know that it's, uh, it's about tech and the startup sector generally, but how do we position ourselves? What, what is it about? So um, our mission, and we haven't actually translated this to English, so I don't know if I say it correctly, but okay. uh, our mission is that with uh, with our heart in tech and smart journalism, we mm-hmm. want to build a better business world. And for us, better business world is like more transparent, more sustainable, more fun. Uh, that's mm-hmm. also really important. And um, we focus on reporting about new the new businesses. And, okay. and for us, that's tech companies, the startups, scale ups we have gone a little bit kind of not absolutely not left the startup scene but we kind of gone a little bit more towards scale ups and, and growing SaaS companies just because a lot mm. of the startups that we used to report about has kind of grown up um, and and our target audience are our leaders and entrepreneurs at at these kinds of companies um, but we also I think it's important what you are asking about like where we want to position ourselves and and, mm. and we we also want to challenge the business world and, and the media business world a bit. Mm-hmm. Like we um, traditionally, like the, the business media is quite kind of kind of it, uh, the readers are a, a bit how to say like the same same group of people. It's a bit like mm-hmm. a man in a suit. Sorry, sorry, Naimu, you mm-hmm. have a you have a suit. <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> but and it, it's a bit like ex, uh, how how do you say that in exclu- um, exclusive? It's mm-hmm. like where, mm-hmm. for example, as a as a young woman, uh, mm-hmm. I never really felt that the business media talked to me, and I think that's uh, something that that it's really important at Break It that we want to also ch- challenge what is the traditional um, business media. Okay. For example, we we can write about how. Uh, the femtech industry is challenging uh, mm-hmm. the new uh, challenging the old industries and we can write about influencers who are entrepreneurs too and and you know create the big companies and that's not really what you normally see in a traditional media uh, i think okay or traditional business media you know, but that's really good to know that you have defined your, so I like the world, I picked up two words here. One was that you picked up the word transparency. I think that's very crucial when you're running uh, an outlet that breaks news or brings information. Transparency is a crucial to that business. And then the other thing is 
challenging the norm. So I think that's very, very important. Um, thinking of startup ecosystem, how do you, what service or what do you bring to the ecosystem? Is it the news or is it the articles that come out or is it more than that? Mm -hmm. What does Break It bring to the startup ecosystem? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. And we actually have like two two pictures of ourselves that we mm -hmm. use here first. The first one is that we want to be um, a church in the in the tech village. Uh, it's mm -hmm. like the place where everyone can just come and, you know, be informed and talk and, and change numbers and, and do business uh, or whatever, really. Um, so can it just like startup grind, a community. Um, okay. The other important uh, task that we have is that we see ourselves as a gardener, like we we need to kind of, I don't know the English word, but garden away the mm -hmm. uh, the bad, um, oh, grass, how do you say that? Bad, uh, not the nice flowers, the, the ones that, you know, destroy your garden. Okay. Uh, what's that in English? <laughs> uh, weeds. Oh, okay. hi, weeding. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, so we need to garden away those so that we can we can make room for the nice flowers to grow. And, you know, there aren't just like good things in the tech and startup industry that sometimes, you know, outside break it. I can see that there's a lot of like uh, people don't really like people can sometimes say to break it that you're quite harsh on companies that you can, mm -hmm. you know, um, they write about if if it's bad working environment or or if it's someone that has gone really uh, their revenue are just you know going into the bottom or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, and we think it's important to do that because we can't just like say that everything is great um so in in order to kind of write about the companies that are great and do great things mm -hmm. we also need to garden away the weeds do you understand my yeah, that, my uh, point okay got it got it i think that's uh that's a good point so you you think community is one thing but you also organize some events because uh, there is something happening on retail side are those events a core part of the break it model or is it something different is it outside break it no, it's it's a very much a core part. So, and that's the tricky thing with the media industry that you need to often have different kind of income streams. So, mm -hmm. in our case, it's uh, our events that we where we have sponsors and people buy tickets, and we have online courses. We just started it during Corona, okay, and um, we have our premium uh, journalist service. So, if you can read break it for free, but if you want to have you know the extra stuff, you you pay for it every month. Um, and then we have ads um, and that's like display banner ads, you know, those blinking things. And we also have sponsored articles where it's written that this is a sponsored article from a big bank or tele telephone company. Um, and all those kind of all those income streams, the revenue streams need to work together um, mm. in a little ecosystem on break it. OK. Brilliant. Uh, a question, uh, like world is very connected. So if you log into Facebook, you're connected to all those billions of other people who are on Facebook, for example, and other uh, digital communities are like that. And then you're building uh, a Swedish uh, community. Um, how is your competition compared to, let's say, Forbes or something? Do you see them as competition, the, the big media and business outlets versus you being focused? Is there something different between what they, what your audience find on Break It and on them? So how would you compare your position compared to leading international business or startup uh, outlets? Yeah, so I think that's uh, one of our biggest uh, um challenges to to uh, uh, that a lot a lot of our readers they speak english really good and they have an international con connections and um contacts all over the world so why should they read a swedish website when they can read for example TechCrunch or the information mm. or uh, financial times but we still see um a very big interest of the swedish market uh, so much that we we've talked about on our um uh, god what's that uh, our what board board meetings that yeah. a lot of board meetings about when should we go into another country and which country should that be but we still think that there's so much to do in Sweden we haven't done we still don't reach uh, we want to reach the uh, every entrepreneur every tech entrepreneur every tech leader in Sweden we still haven't done that so we need to do that first basically okay got it so um 
I was thinking about a couple of other things uh, when, because I read a news that you were taking over uh, Break It uh, when you com- came on board on Break It, and then you had a uh, a news item was about your hundred day agenda. What was that, or what was that about? Because that was quite fresh to read that there is a new person coming in and they have an agenda. Okay, let's see how that works, how that doesn't work. What was, how was that experience? Yeah, so I uh, I worked that. At- at, uh, my, my role was first head of business development at Break It, mm-hmm. but then uh, Ulle, one of our two founders, wanted to step down basically as a CEO and uh, suggested that I would take over instead. And I that was my first time as a CEO. Uh, this was now one and a half year ago. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, I've been running my own business and I've been doing a lot of projects, but I haven't been a CEO over a company with we are 15 employees, which was quite scary I thought and like god I don't know how to be a CEO and like google how to be a CEO uh, and, <laughs> and then I thought <laughs> and then I thought well if I feel like that I can't be alone uh, in this uh, in this world so I, I that's when I, I uh, came up with that I should write about this uh, first time and there is like this um uh, expression that you have a hundred days to make start like your journey as a leader or, or mm-hmm. on a new role and there's a book called your 91st days so 90 or 100 and then okay. I just kind of took that expression to my article series and then I wrote uh, almost every week about what happened in the company and and I, I didn't think that was such a big deal but I've actually never got so many emails there were messages on social media and people like wow finally someone who shares uh, so many things transparent and and I was like whoa oh I had no idea that this <laughs> was something uh, that yeah I don't know that people liked so it was really great 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 um, another initiative uh, that came to uh, that I saw was your you setting up a CEO network if you could talk a little bit about that mm-hmm. what is that and what is it targeted what what is the objective of creating such a network I think it was, first of all, it, it was kind of a spin-off of, uh, of this article series because we saw that there were so many CEOs that contacted us and, and also had this, because I wrote uh, quite a lot about um, the relationship with the founders and that can be really challenging, you know, when you have a strong founder who have their own way of things and then to be a CEO and try to manage that and they still work in the company and we were, you know, fighting and... and uh, uh, trying to work together and so there were a lot of other CEOs who contacted me and said they, they, finally someone who writes about this and talks about this um, so that was kind of the first sign that maybe there is something here we, we mm-hmm. create a community around this and um, but then we also think that there are there are challenges of running a, a tech company that aren't in like a traditional company there is there's mm-hmm. a big difference between running for example a, a um, being CEO over a, a furniture shop and uh, a furniture shop that's going to take over the whole world and mm-hmm. do it completely digitally and really quick to squ- scale really quick. So there are uh, challenges that we can that we need a room to discuss. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it was a success, actually. I, I like to also say when things are, aren't a success, but this CEO mm-hmm. network was a success. We sold out the first 50 tickets directly and then we started a new round with uh, where we are now I think 35 okay. uh, or something so that's that's great so is it like CEOs uh, mentor each other or do they reach out to larger break it community in some way um it's both they they have they are, they discuss with each other and then we have a speaker for for each event so the last time was Michael Watkins and he's actually the mm-hmm. author of this book I uh, talked about your first 90 days so okay. it was really fun um that he he joined okay brilliant um, we are cutting closer to the startup side so if we come to startup like you have experience in the uh, in the media industry from the break its perspective and other media house that you work with and a lot of experience in journalism and storytelling side okay. mm, how do you see startups should approach their storytelling like it's a very competitive world so if there is a furniture business or a digital furniture business there will be hundreds of out, uh, of those out there okay. how do you build your story are there some tips for startups Mm. um i think the first thing you need to to uh, uh, really 
know is your mission and like your why. And that's a cliche, you know, everyone does it, but it, it is a cliche for a reason. Uh, if you don't know it, then you you won't be able to to talk about it to anyone else and they won't figure it out on your own, on their own. So you need to have a really strong mission. I think you need to articulate that mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's just the first tiny, tiny, tiny step. The big, the, uh, the, the big work is to all to, to implement the mission in the entire company in everyone that works there and uh, all the channels that you have and like everything you basically every, everything you do the mission needs to um run as a red thread mm-hmm. um and uh, th- that's quite of a big work i think i've done a lot of mission vision work at different companies and i've done it you know in in a week let's just set our mission mm-hmm. here but i come to realize that you need to put a lot of time in it and i think it took it took a year from me being CEO of Break It to really articulating this, like with hard in tech and smart journalism, become uh, build a better business world mission that we have, and to get everyone to work with it. Um, so now, for example, we have it in all the, our sales meetings when we meet clients, we show our mission, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but that's the first thing, and then. Um, the second thing is the storytelling itself, mm-hmm. and uh, and here my um, my view on that is that everyone has an interesting story. Uh, mm-hmm. It can be that um, the founders saw a, like a major injustice in the world uh, that they didn't like um, and that they wanted to change. Um, it can be that the, the, the founder herself or himself has an interesting story with a background somewhere and they mm-hmm. saw a problem that they wanted to solve. Um, but just like find what's your story uh, and again articulate it write it down maybe get help from a journalist or, or a writer to to get it down on a paper um, and start working with that story too in everything you do uh, and that might sound a little bit like I, I, I want to I like to be concrete so if, I, if mm-hmm. I'm going to take an example uh, one of break it's uh, an important part of Break It storytelling is our transparency and that we are a, com- um, a startup ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so we try, and, and it, we don't even try actually, we just, it comes naturally that when we can, we talk about that we are, you know, we're a startup ourselves. We understand you as a reader or you as a customer who wants to re- reach the startup scene. So, um, yeah, we understand your problems and your, mm-hmm. your challenges, et cetera, et cetera. And that kind of reinforces our story of transparency and being a startup ourselves. Uh, so that's one way of like working with your storytelling. Very interesting. Uh, your point on why I think you're right. There is, a, there is so much uh, work out there right now in the consulting space. So consultants are out there, uh, especially with Zoom, everything going digital. There's so many events happening. Find your why. So I think mm-hmm. that's a very, very interesting space for startups to tap into. My work in corporate uh, space before coming uh, to Sweden was that my learning over there was that large organizations usually are good at figuring out why, mm-hmm. but then they hang it in a boardroom. Mm-hmm. That why never makes it to the end node of the business. Mm. Um, is it the same in startups? Do you think where startups need more effort? Is it that need, they need to figure out the why or do they need to operationalize? What do you think is the challenge for startups? Um, that's a great question. I think uh, it, it re- I, I can see both types. Like mm-hmm. I can see the founders who are so nitty gritty in their business that they don't think about the leadership part of the mission to kind mm-hmm. of articulate it and to always talk about it always in every way you can, like uh, uh, on on Slack, on uh, mm-hmm. your about uh, uh, your company side, on the website, on your social media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but then there are these entrepreneurs that are are great at it uh, and all always talk about their mission and, and that's why they are so great entrepreneurs so i can see both sides but i really see what you mean with that the mm-hmm. fact that you just write the mission down and you hang it on the board <laughs> and you never talk about it and that's the worst thing you can do then it's better not to write it great you also mentioned a very interesting point you were saying that maybe the startup founder has a story which may which is which audience can relate to and that mm-hmm. makes uh, make maybe a lot of impact 
on that in a startup what do you think is it the founder that is important in building the story or the startup brand that's a question which i get a lot in my advisory sessions mm. should we focus on the startup brand or should we focus on me because eventually yeah. i am the person building this startup that's yeah. the typical question from a founder that we get mm. what do you think is important at an early stage for the startup mm. it's it's a, again a great question because it's a, i've been thinking a lot about myself that myself like i uh, i think it's a fine line actually for example for me if if it would be break it is now just camilla i'm like mm. everywhere you know i write on break it every day i'm i'm in these types of talks all the time and i think that's not good for us actually because mm. i mean for example i i might not be at break it for the rest of my life and also uh it's much better if we have 15 people at break it and even more like you know we can have 100 writers from in our reader um in, in base so uh i've decided myself that i i love to be in in different you know a few of those um communities and and mm. talk sometimes but not too much uh, it's mm. better to just focus on break it uh but i it <laughs> I think it depends a lot about on on the founder. Like if it comes naturally, if it's a mm -hmm. person who likes to be on stage, I, for example, it's fantastic if if you're a woman and and mm -hmm. it's like it's important that we see more women founders, female founders uh, out on stages and conferences mm -hmm. and in the media. That's great. You should really use that. But okay. um, if you don't really like it and if you don't really feel you have a lot of things to say then maybe just focus on the company mm -hmm. if, if that's a but but it's a no, it's not no. an easy just you know yes or no okay uh, let's make it slightly more dif uh, difficult mm -hmm. so let's deep dive into this question because i think this is an important theme for mm -hmm. startup builders uh, let's swing the question to the break it side when your editorial team i don't know if uh, editorial team needs to answer when they are picking up a story Mm -hmm. Are they scanning the startups or they are they scanning the key people who are behind the startups? Mm -hmm. So, for example, are they following Klarna or Sebastian? Are they following Niklas or Norhen? Like, mm -hmm. what makes a better story for Break It or Media Outlets, mm -hmm. for example? I'd say they follow both, but it's always more interesting with the person. So, okay. in in that sense, you are like you know you are you are right. It is really important to focus on you as a person. It's and that's not just break it. It's the entire media industry and the entire society. It is that's why we love influencers. That's why we like to use uh, to follow uh, people on Instagram. You want mm. to you don't want to follow a company. You want to follow a human being. Okay. Um, so if you and that's why I always say, for example, as a as a tip, like make sure you have great press pictures. It's like you know really easy trick, but if you have a great press picture of yourself, um, and maybe that you know where you don't just stand on the line like this with a suit and and looks really like corporate, but more you know incorporate mm -hmm. your mission again in your photo. That's that's great and. Um, and yes, like you should pitch yourself as a person too. That's, okay. that's good. Okay. But it's not just that. You can't just say, I'm a great person. I want to be in the media because then, no, that, that's not enough. Okay, brilliant. Two things for the audience. Uh, if you have any questions coming up, please write them on chat because in five minutes or so, Marina will kind of uh, collect them together and we'll put them to uh, Camilla here. And if you have a question for me, you can always put that. The second thing, it's a message. I think uh, Camilla in the last five minutes, really great point. Uh, very important point has come out for startup founders. Don't hide behind your startup brand. Uh, eventually, it's the human side of the startup which is very important. Having the right press pictures or being confident on what, walking on stage and presenting and pushing yourself to make a pitch for your startup is really, really interesting and important uh, for others to hear. And eventually, it works wonders for your own startup. Okay, brilliant, brilliant point. Summarizing it, I think uh, Camilla's point was about storytelling in general, where we talk about mission and why, and then your journey uh, about the mission how would you build it so it uh, 
becomes interesting for the listener and authenticity was a key point that you made that be real be yourself and doing that and if you can add newsworthiness to it it can become important for the media industry brilliant um thinking about future where do you see break it going in next 5 years and yourself it's a very open question so address it any way you want and it's such a hard question uh, <laughs> but and and i kind of went from like before when i answered those sort of question i always had this goal i always had this goal that we're going to be this big and that have done this and this and this but the more experience i got the more i just kind of realize that we want to always just come back to our core and uh, what we do best and and focus on our core members and readers and just create great journalism for them and then we are going to grow and we're going to know which country should we go for next or should we just you know uh, broaden our business in Sweden in different ways but but just uh, continue to do our journey as you know creating a better business world in Sweden that's that's where we're going to be in 5 years too i hope okay okay i think that that's great that's great um, um everyone out there please put your questions in we are going to take some of the first questions that are out there uh, marina can you jump in let's see if i can bring you in here hold on Wow, so many great questions. That's great. <laughs> we'll go one by one. I think we have a structure to this. So, Marina, I'm bringing you on uh, in the yeah. Yes, welcome. Thank you. So hi. Much. Hi, hi, Camila, and hi, Naimo. Thank you for this super interesting conversation. It's not um, very common when you work with startups to hear the the media side, like the the storytelling is super interesting. and uh, yeah i just want to say that i was sitting here i was so inspired by you camilla not only as a young woman but i think also for all you are because you're so genuine and so all it works for you because you're actually genuine and the fact that you know transparency and all this worked out for break it makes a lot of sense when one meets you so yeah thanks for sharing your story um, thank you so much i almost get the A little bit here. That was so so nice words from words from you, Marina. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think many people in the chat felt the same based on the questions. I will just jump straight to them because I want yeah. to give some space to uh, the listener. Now I have so many questions. I hope I don't. I make it. So the first question was from Oleana. She's asking, uh, "What would you recommend? Your recommendation be for B two B startups that are based in other countries and would like to get awareness in Sweden about their work." Mm, um I think you need to kind of define some kind of local uh, aspect or, or angle like if you have people in Sweden that can um where you can that you can lift or uh, or if you do if you're doing something um, uh, specifically like in Sweden uh that that's the most important thing just try to find your local angle because uh, it it's the Swedish media is it's based on Sweden basically um Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um and then we have Patricia. She's asking uh, three consequential questions. She asks first of all, uh can you still read about the first 100 days as a CEO? Uh, yeah, you can. Great. Um I guess we can maybe have a link later. Yeah, about how to find it. And then uh, how long has you been have you been CEO at Breakit? A uh, one and a half year. Great. And what is the action as a CEO that you are the most proud of? Um great question i think it is actually the the mission work and not just you know finding our mission but to to always work with it to uh to find small ways every day to like uh, uh to to use it for example in a sales pitch where we put our mission up or when i have a, a company meeting with our employees and i say well in order to um fulfill our mission to create a better business world we are going to do x and y and z uh i've seen a lot of uh, different in that and i i also see that when we now recruit people they like that that aspect they also want to do something good yeah thanks for sharing that's um very good question patricia <laughs> that was interesting and then we have leif who's asking uh, will we see more material from other parts of sweden startups need international market uh will you focus more on them in the future on startups that need international markets um 
So we have actually, like we have realized, for example, at Break It, that we are too Stockholm focused. And it's really easy when you sit at, you know, close to Stureplan and uh, you meet a lot of Stureplan people, startups, and you just write about them. And that's not good, basically. Uh, so first of all, we, have, we are, uh, we've launched, or the biggest thing we do now is that we've launched a project called The Shift together with an organization called Bling, where we want to, um, it write about and lift uh, companies from I don't know the the English word orten suburban mm-hmm. areas like okay. not just around Stockholm but in entire Sweden mm-hmm. uh, and we see that uh, since the majority of capital and um, investments are made into companies around the big cities and especially around Stureplan we want to shift the capital to these areas and that. We've done that with, uh, we're doing a big uh, competition now where you can pitch your startup to, to investors and we, we only focus on like startups in suburban areas and we also uh, report more about them. So I see a big change actually just in the last couple of weeks where we lift companies that we normally wouldn't maybe have found. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Uh, but I don't think really we are, we're not the best there. We need to maybe... Maybe we have reporters around in Sweden and not just sit everyone in Stockholm. Mm. Uh, I have a, a leading question over there, a follow up on that, because we got a lot of, so since we at Companion advise a lot of entrepreneurs, we got a lot of interest in uh, the shift uh, capital and how it's raised. So mm. just from there for clarity, uh, what's break its role? Are you guys one of investors or are you giving media support? How do you come into the shift equation? Mm. So uh, basically, it's a it's break it and the organization Bling that all, okay. already work with suburban entrepreneurs, and um, they found the entre- they find the entrepreneurs that want investments, okay. and we find the investors. So one of our uh, founders, Stefan Lundell, he's now out uh, talking to investors and hunting money, basically. Um, and he's already got a, a lot of interest. Like th- there, there's a big interest among. Uh, investors because they realize that they mm-hmm. invest a lot of in the Sture plant scene and they want to you know broaden their views so we have a, uh, a quite big number of investors that said that we uh, we will invest if you, we just see good companies and then there will be a, a big kind of darkness there pitching scene uh, in May where uh, the investors will will listen and hopefully mm-hmm. invest so we can shift the capital uh, to these types of companies. Well, I think it's a great initiative because most of the dis- calls or the information requests we got, they were from the s- outside the Stockholm area. Like, so mm-hmm. I think the positioning is really working good. So it's it's a good initiative. Yes, Marina, Thank sorry. You. I just wanted that because mm-hmm. some of the audience uh, in our uh, network might have already applied there. So it's good for them to know. Yeah, yeah that mm-hmm. was super valuable. Now. I don't think many knew about this. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, and then we have a question from Karin. Uh, she's asking, what made you so confident in asking uh, to become a partner or owner in Break It? And what would your recommendation be to other women, female starting companies? Mm. It's, a, it's a hard question for me. Uh, hard, hard, not hard, hard qu- uh, question. I know the English word, but because I think that there's so many fantastic female CEOs or COOs or board members or leaders that uh, should be uh, partners in the company. Uh, And um, they need to to ask for it. And also the men need to, you know, make sure that it happens. And of course, you need to kind of, like I said, cash up. uh, But there are, because if it's an existing company that has already existed for some time, there is a value connected to the company. Mm -hmm. So you can't just... Uh, get uh, shares but there are different ways of doing that like for example you know uh, personal uh, option mm-hmm. programs or you can uh, take like I did a loan from one of the investors that um, etc Th- there are different ways and uh, okay. uh, in my in, the, in my case I think I just uh, first of all I was so sure I didn't want to be only employed uh, so it was kind of a deal breaker for me and second of all I saw that they needed me to be honest because they are great uh, reporters and fantastic people but they are you know reporters at heart and they need this the business person who came in and loves to sell and just earn money so we, it was a good uh, match I think too and I needed them of course because you can't get money if you don't have great reporters yeah 
Well, super interesting. Thank you. So it was also um, a confidence in that you needed, you were bringing something to the team, and just definitely that. And yeah, super interesting. Um, yeah, and then we have a question from Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. How do you view the ethical responsibility in media regarding lifting an organization versus lifting the founder? The, the thing you and I were discussing. How ethical is that? Given that all success is actually a team effort, mm -hmm. and there's only he's writing statistically CEO is three percent of success rate. Mm. I, I think it's such a uh, true. It's so true that it's uh, it is. I can feel that sometimes too when you know we lift a for example a CEO or a founder it's often a founder team uh, but sometimes the founder is, isn't even in the company anymore and we still put up the founder because that more famous person and and then I can feel mm, should we really do that is, is that good or not uh, and I think it is um, it's difficult because you don't you you can't at the same time look at it as the kind of a democratic article where we need to interview everyone that's been part of this uh, this journey, the whole leadership team or or the employees. That that's like impossible. You you need to kind of choose an article, choose an angle, and choose a person that you interview. Um, so my question is that that's kind of how I view it. I I, I don't have a, a definitive answer. It's not easy, but I see what you mean. And I think we can be better at lifting up. For example, we at Break It like, loves to bring up a COO or a, a, um, the head of a department that has done, for example, the new products that we write about. But the company also needs to, to push that person forward and not just push the founders forward because that mm -hmm. happens quite a lot, actually. Yeah, good point. Uh, I wonder if, uh, you know, you were talking before about the now, the importance of having a news in the now. And mm -hmm. maybe companies should be also better at communicating when a shift leadership or when somebody within the company does something great, maybe that could be. Uh, yeah, you lift people. Um, yeah, interesting. And then we have a, a question from Anne Coppens. She's asking, um, very interesting question. How often should you aim to be in the media for your brand to be recognized for what you want it to be known for? Mm -hmm. Is traditional media still the way to go, or should it be also also, or should it always have a blog or social element to it? Mm -hmm. Again, maybe yeah. <laughs> I think you need to work on all those challenges, like from traditional media, your own social media, and and if you, if you do a good job in one of them, the other one will kind of follow. I think, uh, but you can't be everywhere. Of course, you need to also choose what what channels you you put your your focus on. Mm -hmm. um, and what what was the first question again? Uh, yeah, how how often, often in the media? Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, the, the interesting thing is that I've thought a lot about, like, if I in the future would start a startup, I would probably not go to the media because it's, it, it also comes with a backlash. Like, if you do something bad, if you don't mm -hmm. treat your employees good or if, you, if you, you, your revenue doesn't go, you know, only up, up all the time, which, which is, is not, you know, it's quite often that happens, then we we'll write about that too. So if you don't want, if you don't, if you don't, um, you need to kind of realize that you open the door for everything, not just the good things. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't come to the media if you don't, if if you haven't, uh, if you're not prepared on that. But mm -hmm. I still think it's a great, you know, way of getting out and, and getting reach. So um, then, just the, uh, my tips would be all the time. Like if you have news or if you have something happening, just uh, uh, write an email or or make a call. And, uh, and continue to do that. Because for, probably the first time you won't succeed, the second time you won't succeed, the third time you might succeed. That's normally how it looks like. Mm -hmm. And is there any correlation between how many times some, uh, a startup or a company has been on the media and uh, the brand awareness? Or is it more about the, the, the quality of the news, so to speak, like the most sensational news that gets the mm -hmm. brand suddenly recognized? Um, I definitely think it's a big... Uh, um, you, you can see a big um, uh, ah, someone, uh, someone, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. correlation, yes, that mm -hmm. was the word, between like if you, if you are a lot in the media, because if you're there um, and one time, if, for example, if you, uh, if you get a nice article about your, your you know, uh, success or your, uh, your scaling journey or whatever, then 
other media outlets or reporters will see that. And then mm-hmm. when uh, you're looking for like a speaker to an event, or if you're looking for, if you're, for example, writing an article where you interview 10 tech leaders about uh, how they handle the corona crisis, then they will think about that person and, and call that person out. So you can sometimes see that there are people that are in the media all the time. And I try to say that at Reiki too. That we, now we need to call some new people. We can't just take the same old ones that we always have. Nice. All right. And then we have a question from Natasha who's asking, can you tell more about what action you took during your first 100 days as a CEO and how did you afterward measure those actions? Mm-hmm. Um, the fun thing is that some, some of the things I did during that 100 day journey it was like when I, I looked back at it it was like okay I did a lot of work on that which was actually un, quite unnecessary like I worked a lot with budgeting and and really trying to exactly see how much we were going to earn and how much things are going to cost and it, of course it in a way it was good because I got control of the business but on the other hand you know corona corona came and, and I just yeah. had to throw that budget in in the bin um but the, I think the most important thing was really get in, getting into the leadership role and also for me handling the two founders, handling our two, our roles. Mm-hmm. And that was quite difficult. Both areas were difficult, but the, uh, the second one was the most difficult because for me, for, to all of a sudden... Uh, decide over them in all you know most questions and although we of course we're really non-hierarchical hierarchical at break it but still it's like i'm the ceo they are now uh, reporters uh, and and to make that transition wasn't easy for especially for me and stefan we have argued a lot and just like two days ago, we had a big <laughs> argument. <laughs> and, uh, so it's still not, you know, 100% uh, great. Uh, and how do I measure that? Well, that, that's a great question. I don't know. I don't really measure. I, I measure that. I, maybe I should. But I, I can see that we have done a lot of good stuff. Like I can see that we are a good group of people. They're happy. We have employee uh, service that we can see that most of them you know like what they do although corona is like making it difficult in some aspects mm-hmm. uh, and i can also see that you know there are things that aren't good that i need to um, work on um, for example i'm really involved in almost everything i feel like and i need to stop being that uh, mm-hmm. and get people to grow and delegate more mm-hmm. uh, long, long question the long answer to to <laughs> A great question. <laughs> I'll just jump in here. We we have uh, overrun the time. So Marina, if we can, uh, yeah, maybe a couple of more minutes if there are more questions and then we can thank the audience and yeah. Yes, thank you for that. I will just jump in because we have one last question. Do you think to, uh, from Fabrice, uh, do you think to have too big of a dream for your company and towards against development or process of building your company. Sorry, we'll read that question again. <laughs> dream of your company. Yeah. Too big of a dream for your company to work against development or process of building your company. Oh, I think I understand. Yeah. The if question: If it's dangerous to have too big of a dream, yes. and that can like affect you negatively. Yeah, I think I hope that's what you meant, Fabrice. And I think actually you you are right in that. I think uh, it's great to dream big uh, and take over the world, and you know that's how Break It started too. But then you kind of quickly realize that that's not enough. You need to also just work here and now with earning money and taking care of your costs and taking care of your employees and your customers. And uh, sometimes I think your startups um, can be too visionary in the sense that they can raise a lot of capital but they don't really know how to earn money and that's why a few startups or quite a lot of startups uh, don't uh, succeed Uh, so dream big but maybe also work here and now or work here and now Mm -hmm. can we have one more question that would be from me 
for me, that's fine. Yeah, it's an okay with you now. Yeah. We finished the question from the audience. I feel I, I don't feel guilty about that. But I just wanted to ask you a question because you talked about something very important uh, about the why before. Like, be sure that you have a very articulated and clear why so that other people can relate to it and maybe attach to it. And uh, I, I just was wondering about this narrative that there is in the startup community that you really need to be good at focusing about the value for the end customer, you know, that being a company, you know. So if you, if you, it's not good to talk about features, but about what the outcomes of this feature can be for a client. But then how do you, I, I do totally agree with you that there may be, there is two type of companies. Uh, one is the why companies and one is the, you know, um, what companies or something, mm. the how companies, because um, some companies succeed because of their why and people don't, People want to buy into a why, not really. They don't need. A, they don't have a pressing need any like around that why. I don't know how to how you put these two narratives together. Like, should you focus on the value you give to people mm. and to clients, or should you focus about a bigger why? And what's mm. I think in in the best case scenario, or maybe actually in the only case scenario, when I think about it, you need to you need to have both. You need to the, your mission to really articulate why you are uh, do. The value for your customers and uh, mm. uh, if you can get that together that's the perfect why uh, yeah mm. awesome got it thank you perfect thank perfect. you I think, I think the big message here for the uh, entire audience first of all a big thank you to startup guy in stockholm community for being here for uh, us with this talk but i think focus on the why is the main thing but then don't hang it in a boardroom, take it out and implement the why, take it out to the team, to the investors, to the customers who really want to see that why in action. So why and why in action, two things. Uh, Camilla, thank you so much for joining us, giving us your time and we thank Break It for being here with us for uh, answering all these questions. Marina, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for the rest of Startup Grind Stockholm team. Brilliant session, and we are back in April with Blockit event. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so Marina much. and Namul, and thank you for all the questions. And hi, mom. <laughs> bye. Have a very, very good day. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.